can't see a damn thing. What's up, guys? It's me, on here today. I'm between innings to talk about the NFL Week 11. So I know this is late. You should probably be seeing this noon, Tuesday, uh, Thursday. So yeah, this is gonna be after the Thanksgiving Day game start. But I recorded a 16 minute, yeah, it was long NFL Week review, talking about the schedule, stats, and standings. And then when I tried to go edit it, it said there was no media found, and now I have to restart. But yeah, I'm gonna make this one a little quicker. So I'm gonna go over the schedule real quick, standings probably really quick, and then the stat leaders. So first, um, Thursday we had the New England Patriots, and they played the Atlanta Falcons, and they beat them 25-0. I'm not gonna go over the passing, rushing, leading, passing, rushing, receiving leaders in all these games, which I did last time. It's too long. Then, uh, so the Patriots won that 25-0. Then on Sunday, the Colts play the Buffalo Bills. The Colts won 41-15. Jonathan Taylor had five touchdowns. The Baltimore Ravens then play the Chicago Bears, and the Ravens won 16-13. Then the Detroit Lions played the Cleveland Browns, and the Cleveland won 13-10 to make the Lions' schedule stay, um, record 0-9-1, the only winless team still in the NFL. Then the Houston Texans played the Tennessee Titans with the Titan with the Texans winning 22 to 13. Then the Green Bay Packers played the Minnesota Vikings and lost to the Vikings 34 to 31 off a game-winning field goal from the Vikings with two seconds left in the game. Then the Miami Dolphins played the New York Jets, two of the worst teams in the NFL, and Miami won 24 to 17. Then the New Orleans Saints played the Philadelphia Eagles and the Eagles won 40 to 29. Then the Washington Football Team played the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton's First start with the Panthers since 2019, and Washington won 27 to 21. After that, the 49ers played Jacksonville, and the 49ers won 30 to 10. The Cincinnati Bengals played the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Bengals won 32 to 13. The Dallas Cowboys played the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chiefs won 19 to 9. I thought that was going to be a better game than it wasn't, because they're two very explosive teams, but it wasn't. Then the Arizona Cardinals played the Seattle Seahawks, and the Cardinals won 23-13. I think they're now 9-2, and the best record in the NFL, if I'm correct. And then, finally, the Pittsburgh Steelers played the LA Chargers, and the Chargers won 41-37. Herbert going off in this game. When I said finally, I mean I meant the last game on uh, sorry Sunday, because on Monday... On Sunday, the New York Giants played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the reigning Super Bowl champions, and Tampa Bay won 30-10. to Sorry, I don't know if you probably, you've never seen me in this background. I'm at an Airbnb in Texas. The one I had recorded before this was at my grandparents' house, but just woke up and I was like, wow, editing's not working, so I'm doing it here in the room that I'm staying in. So the two teams I'm by this week were the Denver Broncos and my L.A. Rams. I'm going to go over the standings really quick. In the AFC East, the Patriots are 7-4. and four, The Bills are 6-4. and four, The Dolphins are 4-7. and seven, The Jets are 2-8. and eight. Remember, the first team I say is in first place. Second, the last team I say is in fourth. So first, second, third, fourth. In the AFC North, the Ravens are 7-3. and three, The Bengals are 6-4. and four, Steelers are 5-4-1, and one, and the Browns are 6-5. and five. In the AFC South, the Tennessee Titans are 8-3, and three, the Colts are 6-5, and five, the Texans are 2-8, and eight, and the Jaguars are also 2-8, and eight, they're in fourth. Then in the AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs are 7-4, and four, Chargers are 6-4, and four, and both the Raiders and Broncos are 5-5, five and five, Raiders in third, Broncos in fourth. Then in the AFC Conference, we have the NFC East. Dallas Cowboys are 7-3. and three. Eagles are 5-6. and six. Washington is 4-6. and six. And the New York Giants are 3-7. and seven. Then the NFC North, the Green Bay Packers are 8-3. and three. Vikings are 5-5. Five and five. Bears are 3-7. and seven. And the Lions are 0-9-1. And, and the NFC South, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 7-3. and three. The Saints are 5-5. Five and five. The Panthers are 5-6. and six. The Falcons are four and six, and finally in the last division, the NFC West, the Arizona Cardinals are nine and two, the Rams are seven and three, the Forty ers are five and five, and the Seattle Seahawks, after being twelve and five last season, I'm pretty sure, best 
no, 12, 12 and four. Best team in the NFC West. They are last and they're 30 and seven. One of the worst teams in the NFL right now. And now I'm gonna go over the stat leaders really quick. Okay, so for the offensive side, I'm gonna go the passing, rushing, receiving yards. The passing leaders, Patrick Mahomes has 3,200. Tom Brady for the Buccaneers, 3,177. Derek Carr for the Raiders has 3,041 yards. Matthew Stafford for the Rams has 3,014. And Justin Herbert has, for the Chargers has 2,927. So I'm listing the top five for each one. Like I said, first one's one, last one's five. Then for rushing, Jonathan Taylor for the Indianapolis Colts has 1,122 yards. Derrick Henry for the Tennessee Titans, who is out for the season, are still second on this list, even after being injured, up, I think, two weeks ago. He has 937 yards. He definitely would have had the most at the end of this season if he was still playing. Then Nick Chubb for the Cleveland Browns has 851. Joe Mixon for the Bengals, 759. And Dalvin Cook for the Minnesota Vikings, 734. On the receiving end, Cooper Cup for the Rams has 1,141 on, on pace to beat some NFL records if he can keep doing what he's doing. Then Debo Samuel for the 49ers has 994. Devontae Adams for the Packers has 979. Justin Jefferson for the Minnesota Vikings has 944. And Tyreek Hill for the Kansas City Chiefs has 932. On the defensive side, for total tackles, Bobby Wagner for the Seahawks has 115. Denzel Perryman for the Raiders has 114. Foy Olakon for the Falcons, sorry if I said that wrong, has 110. Roquan Smith for the uh, Chicago Bears also has 110. Finally, Eric Hendricks for the Minnesota Vikings has 103. Then in the sacks game, Miles Garrett has 13 for the Browns. TJ Watt for the Steelers has 12.5. Hassan Reddick for the Panthers has 10.5. I don't know if that's how you say his name, sorry. Matthew Judon for the Patriots has 10.5. And Robert Quinn for the Bears, I think he was a former Ram, has 10. On the interception side, Trayvon Diggs for the Dallas Cowboys has 8. JC Jackson for the Patriots has 6. Kevin Bryard for the Tennessee Titans has 5. Jordan Poyer for the Buffalo Bills has 4. And Adrian Phillips for the Patriots has four. So two Patriots in the top five. They combine for eight inter uh, ten interceptions. It's crazy to see Aaron Donald not on the top of the sacks, but it's kind of hard when you're getting double teamed and triple teamed all the time. I think he has like six or 6.5 sacks on the season. But that's it for today. Uh, after that, I'm going to be watching these Thanksgiving games. And after all that's over, tomorrow I should be... Eh, actually, no, I probably won't attempt to record, but maybe on... Saturday you'll be seeing a Thanksgiving game review because I did a preview on the game so I'll do a review and then I'm probably gonna do another team I made a video like doing MLB quizzes but that's still a work in progress so I don't know when that'll come out but thanks for watching see you next time peace I can't see a damn thing, thing.